Hey, what's up, rock stars? It's Rocks, and I'm coming to you today with the 34th installment of Black Girls on Television. I'm tired today. I told you guys I was starting that class yesterday, that certification um, prep class, and how about there's a rock star in there? Shout out to Jessica. She came up to me on the break, and I was feeding my face. I was starving because I didn't get lunch yesterday. I was trying to get all that damn top of the blogs done. <laughs> anyway, the class is going to be cool, but it's on Thursday nights, and it's till 9 o'clock, and then it's about 45 minutes away from my house, and you know, it takes me like four hours to unwind. I don't care what time I get home. I can't just go to sleep. So, next thing I knew, it was 2 o'clock in the morning. And not only that, but my son gonna send me a fucking text. You know, me and my husband a text. He, he send a text when he know he's about to say some shit that's gonna piss you off. Talking about he gotta be at basketball practice this morning at 6.30. So, of course, my husband was like, well, I'll take him. Because I was already annoyed about it. How about this morning? Bro, man gonna outsleep me, y'all. We was both laying there. My son came in the room. And um, I was laying there trying not to get up. And he was laying there. I was just like... I just went on and got up because I figured I could just go straight to work and be on time for a, ch for a change. So, <sighs> yeah, I've, I've, I probably got three hours of sleep last night. I'm tired today. We gonna get through this damn black girls on television and then it's gonna be the weekend, biatch. Oh, I can't wait. Anyway, you guys, the recaps, let's get to it, shall we? All right, you guys, so Lucius and Andre are in the old neighborhood. Uh, they're going to Shine's place to see about signing Nessa. Andre sees Nessa. He's overcome by her beauty, I guess, by her beautiful voice even before he sees her. They try to get her to sign a basic contract, you know, for first uh, album deals for a new artist. Shine tells him, you know what? We got a whole bunch of other people here that want her as well, okay? Looks like we got ourselves an old-fashioned bidding war. You know Lucius don't like like that so he goes back to the office and he's pissed at Becky and at Cookie for letting the ball drop Becky was like motherfucker you ain't gave me the A&R position so that's why she ain't got signed he don't give a fuck Cookie comes in she says she's hired some new um, Jewish guy and I was like Becky if this ain't sign enough that you need to get the hell on like your boyfriend said sitting up there being loyal to them and they done gave the damn job away to somebody else Lucia said he don't give a damn who it is okay y'all better get this damn exclusive song out for, for Empire Extreme um, and he won it by Friday. And he tells Cookie to get it together. Your, your nerves bad because Councilman Diggs ain't called you? He rolls his eyes and walks out. He's a fucking hater. Now, while Cookie is taking care of business with Portia, having her make a list of things to do. Okay, oh, did Councilman Diggs happen to call? No, he has not. As soon as she does that, we get three little kids that walk up that sing Frere Jaca to her. And then um, up walks Councilman Diggs. He want to ask her out on a date. Well, he presents it that he wants her to see um, an artist singing. She was just like, oh, you want me to see somebody singing now, huh? And he was just like, yeah, just come on. It's a, it's a date. She says, okay. Then she goes on to tell Portia how Councilman Diggs reminds her of old Ben back in the day we get a flashback of Barry and how he's such a good dude and the daddy wanted her to marry Barry but you know how it is we don't never want the good boy dad was like you got a, your whole life ahead of you you are the one the chosen one out of all my fucked up ass daughters <laughs> Don't mess it up with no damn drug dealer like Lucius, okay? You ain't going to school and all that. She was like, I promise you, I'm not messing up my grades. You know, I, I got this all, but um, I, I love the music. Back in the present, Lucius walks up and he's hating again. Wonders what she even sees in Councilman Diggs. She says that he's a good man. He was just like, yeah, and he'd be fucking all these socialites. He's about to run for mayor. What makes you think that he would want a convicted felon on his arm, okay? Don't get caught up, cookie. Again, hating. Now, Hakeem tell Lucius that he gonna get Nessa to sign, okay? Lucius said he already put Andre on it. Andre says, how about me and ha Hakeem work on it together? Lucius says, that's fine. What's the deal you guys got? Andre says something, and Lucius was like, you know what? 2.5 million, okay? Go on and give that to her. Let's finish this deal out. When Andre asked Hakeem to excuse them, he tells uh, Lucius that Jamal had gone to see uh, Fantage Loaf in jail, and he's going again today. Just thought that Lucius should know that, okay? Lucius was like, you know what? You my boy. Be running back and telling on everybody. We're going to be an amazing team. 
Now we see Jamal, he's back at the jail, round two. He's having his nervous breakdown, he's getting the shakes and everything, but his counselor is there to help him through it this time. When Fantage Loaf comes out to talk to him, she's all beat up. He was like, who did this to you? She says, oh, you got a lot of fans here in jail, okay? He was just like, oh, I'm gonna get you out. She was like, no, I'm gonna be all right. And he's like, no, I'm gonna get you out because they're gonna kill you up in here. Jump back over to Hakeem's dumb ass. He got this whole production that's being shown all out in the middle of New York Times Square. I was like, uh-uh. a shameless plug y'all he got the cameras rolling he whining and dining nessa shine with her you know and he's telling them how you know and nobody's gonna beat this deal that empire is gonna give nessa shine says okay well let's see what you got he was like well i don't really have no contracts and shine said well you just write it down on a napkin that'll be binding until we get the full contract okay so hakeem stupid ass gonna write 2.5 million on the damn napkin i thought he was gonna write more i was like this motherfucker really about to fuck it up okay but he writes down 2.5 million and, um, you know, Shine looks at the paperwork and then he puts it up to the camera. You know, I can't give me that bag. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Give me that, man. I was just like, this is what happens when you have a fucking 19, 20 year old motherfucker trying to run a damn business. I can't know what the fuck he doing. Now, Shine was telling all of the other people that's in this bidding war, you know what? If you want Nessa, you better not come with anything less than 2.5. Now, back to Cookie, she going on this date with Councilman Diggs. You know, she can't settle on her outfit. She got a whole bunch of things in mind. She puts them on. None of them is right. She finally settles on this red hot little number. When she gets to um, the date, she's meeting Councilman Diggs there. She got on this mini dress, red, tight, low cut, you know, big ass earrings, a whole bunch of bangle jewelry. And come to find out, Councilman Diggs that took her up there with the Jack and Jills and the and the socialites. Everybody got on ball gowns. He got on a tuxedo. And fucking Cookie looking like she fixing to go to the goddamn club. She was just like, why you didn't tell me that this is what it was? And he was just like, it's okay. You look great. Of course, the women is throwing shade, looking at her like, mm, you know. So she she goes on and helps him out, lets him know that she just got out of damn jail. You can tell that she's out of her element and she's uncomfortable. However, Councilman Diggs, he loves all of this. Okay, he sits her down. They go see this opera singer. This is the singer that he wanted her to see. She's overcome. All right, what is she saying? Councilman Diggs throws out to her. Give her a little culture. Let her know what it is. Cookie is so overtaken by the beauty of this woman's voice. She stands up. Girl, you better sing. I was thinking to myself like, I mean, you could be the most ghetto of all kind of people. You would know not to jump up and yell nothing out of no fucking opera. Of, like, what is... Okay, anyway, I guess it's just to reiterate that Cookie is out of her element. Once she goes to the bathroom, she's in there, she's just like kind of leaning against the wall like, oh, this is just too much, like this is not me. Here comes those two bitches that she met out front, Jack and Jill, or should I say Jill and Jill. <laughs> you know, ooh, what is with Councilman Diggs and this hood rat? How long he gonna hold on to this one? You know he's a playboy. Going on and on, Cookie walks out and, you know, she confronts him, tells him she gonna whoop their ass, but then she go and just sprinkle a little water in their face. Okay, bitch, you, you lucky today. I got on this mini dress, I don't feel like showing my panties. She walk on out, and uh, instead of going back up to Councilman Diggs, she just walks out. Okay, that's too much for her. Now, Tiana goes to tell Cookie at the office, you know what, I'm not with this whole beef. I'm tired of these two niggas fighting over me. You know, I feel like I'm being pulled in the middle of this. You know, this ain't my thing. I ain't no damn reality show star. I'm a singer. Cookie was like, it's okay. We gonna, it's gonna work out. You know, don't worry about it. We're gonna take advantage of it. Tiana ain't feeling it, though. But Tiana don't never really have much choice. Now, we see Councilman Diggs at Jamal's place. Place and he's just trying to figure out how he can break through to Cookie. Jamal tells him like, yeah, you guys come from two different worlds. You need to loosen up, okay? Put on some fucking clothes other than a damn suit. And try to come down to her level. <laughs> Councilman Diggs, he takes that all into account. Then Jamal tells him that he wants to get a Fantage Loaf out of jail, okay? Councilman Diggs was like, maybe we can get her on an insanity plea. Uh, okay, yeah, I got somebody. You know, I'm gonna put a lawyer in contact with you and we're gonna see about getting her out of there. Now, Nessa and Andre is talking. Since Hakeem and did what he did you know they got to hurry up and close this deal so he goes and tells Nessa like you know what you don't know what you were shine is using you you need to come on and be with us you know you don't want to deal with them other white companies they ain't gonna look out for you like we are she was like oh so it's a black thing he was just like baby girl it's always a black thing anyway to make a long story short he gets her to sign why he do that y'all <laughs> that damn shine was pissed as fuck 
he runs back to the office, you know, Andre is telling Lucius that he got it signed, and you know, Lucius is like, good son, you know, you did it. Now we just gotta get Shine to do it. When Shine come in there, he just bust uh, Andre in the mouth, you know, two, three good times, you know, Andre fall off to the side. He looked like he about to try to get with Lucius, and then Andre is like, I got it, pop. And so they fight. All these hard ass blows, you know, Shine's like, you trying to take everything from me. He pulls out a gun on, on Jamal and Lucia's like, enough of this shit. He pick up a bat and he busts a nigga in the kneecaps and then he hit him one more good time, okay? And uh, so Shine is out on the floor. Lucia's is like, motherfucker, I don't know what you think this is, but you fixing to sign this damn contract. He throw it down there on the floor. You know, Shine spit on it. I ain't signing that shit. Lucia's like, I see the bat didn't work, so let me pull out this gun. So he pulls a gun on him and tells him, you gonna sign this shit. So I guess Shine Shine ain't got no choice. And then to steal the deal because Andre is so tough. He kicks Shine. I said, that kick right there then got you fucked up. Now, Jamal and Councilman Diggs, you know, they talk to the lawyer. The lawyer talk to the judge. They get uh, Fantage Loaf out of jail. Jamal gives this whole heartfelt speech about how Empire failed her and they the reason why she in jail and all of that. Okay, so now Fantage Loaf is out. Now, the, the, the Empire Extreme event. Tiana's up there singing and whatnot. Some song called uh, Nobody loves me like me okay everybody's pleased councilman Diggs walks in there you know he relaxed this time got on a nice little sweater and some slacks cookie is impressed but she was just like you know you in my world now nigga so just sit there and shut up and watch the show so she sings a song everybody's pleased you know lucius walks up afterwards just like oh you know because at the beginning of the song there's some opera in it you know cookie didn't put a little bit of that in it so you know lucius is teasing and saying you know okay the song was hot good 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 cookie walks off and lucius did she tell you how she got the name cookie so it's a flashback and we see lucius back in his young days and i couldn't tell you how that motherfucker became a rap star <laughs> i was just like that old fucked up ass lackadaisical rapping that he was doing i said you guys couldn't find anybody else that actually knew how to rap like you know just talking i mean just terrible y'all we see barry at the damn party he trying to get cookie to leave that's his girl lucius takes care of him him and his boys take him out behind the little um underground club or wherever they at and they beat his ass okay and he says that loretha is that her name loretha that's his cookie now so that's how he got it so he tells um councilman Diggs back in the present no matter what happens with me and cookie we always make it back to each other and uh, councilman Diggs was like okay well we'll see about that now jamal goes and tells lucius that he got fantage loaf out and uh, lucius was like yeah i know okay i set that whole shit up i got ass beat in the jail and made you feel sorry for her and i didn't even have to tell you to try to get her out okay you went on and took it upon yourself to get the councilman Diggs, to get the lawyer and break her out yourself and now that we got her out on the temporary insanity plea she can't even say that I tried to kill her father without people thinking that she's crazy. So, you know what? It all worked out. You know, Jamal is just like, so you used me. <laughs> he was just like, yeah, but you know what? You used the lawyer. So, you know, we kind of the same. I know you don't like to admit it, but uh, yeah, we did that together. So, Jamal is upset about it, okay? He take it on back to the apartment. He back to yodeling, y'all. He got the counselor there with him, and he's trying to help him through it like it's not your fault. He's just trying to help Jamal through this PTSD situation. It's obvious that these two are about to hit it off. We ain't seen that the counselor's gay, but you know, they be so warm and cozy all the time. It's just a matter of time. Anyway, when the counsel counselor is about to leave out, Jamal, you know, just from habit, he opens up his pills and he's about to take the pills and he picks up his drink and he's going to swig it down. And counselor was like, hey, you shouldn't mix those two, okay? You shouldn't be doing all of that. And, you know, Jamal was just like, you're right. And he takes it out of his mouth puts it down counselor leaves he puts it back in his mouth takes the swig and commences to yodeling and then lastly in a little combination scene we get jamal you know yodeling the song like i told you okay we see shine and his boys okay he getting them ready for war he said an attack on me is an attack on all of us lucius want war that's what he fixing to get them motherfuckers is getting the malcolm x rifles and shit they about to wreck some i was like where the fuck y'all going with all these damn guns and everything you fixing to blow the building up like yeah you it, we, covert we need to change the, the approach you can't just bust a motherfucker you just gonna take it to the street like that 
y'all, we also see during this scene that uh, Andre is with Nessa. She says that Shine don't know she's there with him. But, uh, you know, these two, they got it in for each other, you know, so they staring at each other and they get the kissing and he pushes her on to the desk and they fixing it. It's fixing to go down, y'all. And then all of a sudden he realizes he can't do it. And she was like, it's okay. I know you lost your wife. And he was like, what you say? And then all of a sudden you see old Rondo in the background, okay? Old slut ass, whole ass self. She's like, go on and do it, baby. We're going to have a threesome. I was like, oh, I'll be crazy. Are you fixing to fuck this girl with your damn wife on your back? Now that he's got the okay, the blessing of Rhonda, he goes on and seals the deal. Him and him and uh, Nessa fucking on the damn desk. And child, we got Rhonda on his back helping him out, you know, all the way through. <laughs> I said, go on, be crazy. <laughs> all right, how to get away with murder. We're going to try, y'all. We're going to try. It opens, you know, four weeks into the future with the house burning down and Annalise in jail, okay? Bonnie goes to the jail and she tells Annalise that there was somebody in the fire that survived, okay? There was another body, but they don't know who it is. Now, four weeks earlier, we see Annalise with um, the lesbo friend. I, but y'all, I can't remember what I used to call her. They at the bar, and you know, they about to toss them back, get drunk, and have a good time, okay? You get two guys that walk up and trying to hit, hit on both of them. When Annalise and her get a kick out of them, tells them that, you know, they gay and the boys don't care, okay? They gonna have drinks, they gonna have a good time. So, you know, they all drinking, they dancing. Then when she leaves the club, she take it all home. The real nice Nate, he there for it, just a smiling. I was just like, girl, you gonna fuck this up. That man waiting on you to come home. You, you out here fucking around with the lesbian child? You got that fine piece of man sitting up there in your damn house? Same time we see Frank in the hotel with a wad of money. Some woman comes to the hotel room. He gives the woman the money and she gives him, it looks like a big canister. And evidently it is some explosive. She was like, don't blow your ass up. I said, please, fine ass Frank, don't blow your ass up. <laughs> blow anybody else ass up. Do not blow up fine ass Frank. Laurel's trying to reach fine ass Frank. She got a new cell phone, so she calls him, leaves a message. This is my new number. I'll explain to you why I had to change it out, but you know what? Go on and call me here. Now, this new case, this kid got caught for credit card fraud, and um, they want to send him to juvenile detention for seven years or something like that. Masher is the first chair, and Annalise, you know, when they go to court, fuck, she is hungover. Okay, she was like, you better be on your A-game because I am fucked up. I've been out with my lesbian girlfriend and then, you know, I had to come home to my to my real nice Nate. They try to get the court session going and they got Asher up there, you know, giving his opening speech and it is elementary at best. Okay, he's stumbling and stammering. Everybody is looking like, oh my God, please, like, get him off the stage. Somebody rushes in in prosecution. They over there whispering, you know, you know, Asher's like, Judge, I demand you to, you know, tell them to stop whispering and all of that. They say that they are going to move to have this person who is not a lawyer, you know, taking off the case. And, and, and Elise tries to tell the judge that, you know, this is her student and how the agreement is. And, and then they're like, no, baby, we're talking about you. Okay, long story short, Annalisa's swift ass swing on old boy last week. Okay, that shit come back to, to haunt her. Okay, because they had a camera in the room. And uh, now they're saying that her license is taken. So they shutting the old girl down. She want to know how the fuck this even came about. She go home and, uh, you know, real nice Nate get a kick out of the little video. She was just like, you know, we got to find out who did it. So, you know, real nice Nate says he gon' he on it. I was like, oh, that real nice Nate is so sweet. Girl, you fucking it up. Now that Annalise can't practice anymore, you know, she has Bonnie. So Bonnie is taking over. The defendant is just like, uh, is he going to stay on? And, you know, she's just like, yeah, he's going to be on and I'm going to be over it. And don't you worry about it. They're trying to find out where, what did you do with this money okay this money that's missing where is it you know he just say i spent it spent it on what okay he just say he spent it so they was like you know fuck this oliver go on and do what you do electronically find out what happened with this money now laurel's on the case to find and find ass frank okay she goes to talk to his dad ask him if he had he heard from him and, you know he was just like no i i haven't really and this is where i kind of i lost track a little bit of what the daddy say what did the daddy tell her exactly he said something about frank being in pittsburgh okay so of course that jogs her memory that her dad told her that he was there as well okay then it flashes over to fine ass frank okay he's working looks like as a janitor in some prison and uh, we don't understand why he there but he flirting with some blonde lady in there i said oh, okay look like he trying to get something out of this lady 
Now back to uh, Bonnie. They find out that there is some storage uh, shed um, that uh, the, the defendant had taken out. Okay, that's what Oliver finds out. So when Bonnie and Asher and the defendant boy, I think it was named Tristan, I think it was Tristan. When they go to the uh, shed, it's full of baby stuff, like full, completely full. Bonnie's like, who the fuck this for? Okay, he was like, for my girlfriend. All right, come to find out, y'all, the girlfriend is one of his teachers. So he didn't got his teacher pregnant, and he bought all of this shit for her. So she interviews the teacher. Do you think he stole the money to help somebody? And she was just like, maybe. Do you know if he had any girlfriends, anybody special? She was like, no, he always kept his head in the books. So the teacher is not admitting, of course she wouldn't, that, you know, she didn't fucked on this boy and um, she's pregnant. Asher tells her, you know, you ain't thinking clearly because of the rape case with your daddy. This ain't the way to go. Bonnie was like, well, you sat and watched the girl get gang raped. Okay, is that uh, affecting your, your decision-making um, abilities on this case too? Okay, if it ain't, then get the fuck out of my face and let me do my damn job. Now, real nice Nate, he waiting in the dark garage, you know, for the the black prosecutor, the girl, to come out, and uh, he asked her about this video. You know, she didn't even know nothing about it. He was just like, just trying to find out, you know, who released this information. And she was just like, yeah, it wasn't me, but uh, damn, did she lose it like that? Girl, girl is going crazy. Now, Annalise, in another drunken night with the lesbian, you know, they talking about uh, what Annalise did with this money that she got from her husband's death, okay? And she's like, yeah, I hired a hit man to kill fine-ass Frank, and, and, you know, lesbian was like, what? What you do that for? And she was just like, well, I mean, I didn't say that they was going to kill her. I didn't really know what to do, but he killed my baby. I mean, I can't let him get away with nothing like that, can I? You know, lesbian feels sorry for, her. you know, Annalise is crying on her shoulder. And then in walks real nice Nate. And he's looking like, oh, I didn't know the lesbian was in town. And Annalise looked at him and he looked at the lesbian and lesbian looked at Annalise. And <laughs> child, they was all staring each other down. And then finally, you know, Annalise was just like, did you find out anything about the tape? He was just like, no, but I don't think that she's behind the tape release now megan the girlfriend to west boy that west show look good too that's a it's a whole bunch of fine men on this show but that west just oh he just he is something cute too child anyway megan calls um laurel i was like bitch that's right keep that enemy close calls her tells her she wants her to help her plan a um surprise party for Wes and Laurel you know she trying to find her man but you know whatever she gonna she gonna try to help out the best way she can back to Bonnie you know she's talking to Asher and she's saying how you know the teacher took advantage of him he has a history of abuse and she raped the boy basically kind of ain't got time for all this you know all this discussion amongst the students and and uh, Bonnie he goes and has a fucking threesome with um two young gay boys on the on the on the on the campus so i guess connor is back to being reckless uh in the meantime oliver you know he finds a uh, email from barry lewiston annalise run down there you know she doing like she usually do overbearing yelling screaming and the person like wait wait a minute wait the fuck a minute now i don't think you're just gonna come up in here and run shit we didn't took your license and bitch, we could fire you if we wanted to. And Elise tried to, you know, do again. You ain't firing me and all that. She was like, oh, yeah, yeah, we can fire you. Your suspension makes your contract nullified. So don't come running up in here with the bullshit no more. Next time you stop at that receptionist desk. And if I feel like talking to you, I will. Okay, so Annalise was motor. I was like, scratch your neck, Annalise. Now, Wes, even though he's as cute as can be, he's still getting on my nerves with this whole thing with Laurel, okay? Laurel tells him that the girlfriend is having a party for him because, you know, he she trying to get him off of her back from, you know, her trying to find out where fine-ass Frank is. I was just like, that's fucked up. I mean, I like a surprise. So, I mean, I, maybe that didn't bother him, you know, but he was just like, wow, nobody's ever done anything for me like that. That's because the bitch love you, and you fixing to fuck it up running after Laurel, who's still in love with fine-ass Frank. Now, Annalise in another drunken stupor at the house, you know, when real nice Nate get home, he can't take it no more. He tells her that she's drunk, and she was like, I don't give a fuck. Why don't you move out? He was just like, you out here running around town with the lesbian, and I'm sitting up here in this house, and she hits him in the chest, and she said, you want to hit me? Go on and do it, and he calls her a cancer. Don't Oh, nobody realize how fucking sick you are okay you're gonna die alone in this house it ain't gonna be your mama it ain't gonna be lesbian it ain't gonna be me it's just gonna be you and she was just like nigga i don't know why the fuck you still standing here okay so then real nice nate was like okay that's how you want to do it then fine i'm out i was just like Grr. you don't know what you just did now back to the case you know, after Bonnie had been told Asher to shut the fuck up and quit trying to tell me what to do, I got this. She got the teacher on the stand. Oh, you guys, they're going my Jeep. 
Oh, I tell you, I've been seeing these Jeeps all around. It's a sign from God that I should be going to get my Jeep Wrangler uh, Unlimited <laughs> Sport. I'm going to get one at the end of November, you guys. But, oh, I, I don't need the car note to hit before... Um, I don't need the car note to hit before Christmas, so I'm trying to time it out. So, But, yes, it's coming soon, y'all. It's going to be a new studio, but I didn't got off, y'all. Let me get back on track here. So she got the teacher up on the stand. She's questioning the teacher. Did you know anything about these credit cards? The teacher says no. She asked her if the teacher is pregnant. The prosecution was like, what that got to do with anything? Bonnie was like, y'all going to see in a minute. The judge was like, hey, teacher, you ain't got to say nothing. If you want to, you can plead the fifth. Bonnie was like, okay, fuck that. You're not going to tell us that you're pregnant by this boy? that you raped him and took advantage and <laughs> advantage of him knowing that he's come from all types of abuse you know the boy is sitting at the table like what is she doing why is she doing this she's he's fussing at asher like tell her to stop well asher can't tell her to stop and bonnie is going on and on she badges the lady long enough to where finally the lady says she gonna take the fifth and tristan again is mad when he gets them back to talk to his counsel he's telling bonnie like you know what this is not what i wanted okay now she's gonna have a baby and it's, she's gonna have it in jail and he's not gonna have a mother he's not gonna have a father like you fucked everything up you know so bonnie was just like yeah i'm sorry okay i know you don't understand right now but you was taken advantage of i'm doing the right thing she needed to get in trouble for that when tristan walks away you know asher tells her you know what you were right i was wrong you did the right thing here now annalise because she's trying to get her damn job back she tapes a video that says you know she's an alcoholic and if the bar association i guess would give her back her license then she will you know admit herself into rehab and get her life together okay at the same time we see real nice nate in the bed with that fucking prosecutor <laughs> She was like, I've been wanting this for a long time. I was like, bitch, I know you have. <laughs> Shit. And at least you didn't you didn't ran your damn dick off to somebody else. See, this is what happened. Women, we be talking too fucking much sometimes. That damn real nice thing is a good ass man. And look at it. child, child, child. When Annalise goes back to tell uh, you know, the lesbian what she did, um, and how Real nice Nate was the one who came up with the idea. That there again, you didn't fucked it up, okay? This is the time that the lesbian tells her that, you know, Annalise, she didn't met somebody else, okay? And it's pretty serious, and the girl wanted to move off to San Francisco, and she loves her, and the girl loves her back. So, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to be done with this. Can't be fucking around with you. Annalise gives her her blessing, so I guess that's that. And now you didn't gave away your puss and your dick. You didn't fucked it up. Now, this surprise party, you know, I'm thinking, like, y'all ain't got more friends than just a few five people that always get together. Laurel stressed. Oliver and Connor going back and forth with this, whatever the fuck they got going on. In the meantime, we see Annalise in her refrigerator. She cleaning out all the healthy shit. It looked like it's a whole bunch of spinach. <laughs> she tell Bonnie, you know what? Pronto, bring back my damn junk food. Bonnie looked like she saw a ghost. Annalise was like, what's wrong? And she was just like, well, uh, turns out that my dad is dead. This is why she's explaining to Annalise what's going on. We see fine-ass Frank. Now we realize why he's at the jail. He fucks on the old blonde lady so he can get her key card, so he can get access to um, Bonnie's daddy, and um, go on and kill him off for what he's done to Bonnie in the past. This shit with Bonnie and uh, fine-ass Frank and Annalise is so convoluted. Like, what is going on? Like... Are you guys for each other or against each other? It's like, you want to kill him, but, you know, Fine Ass Frank has done all this shit for Annalise, and, you know, he's doing this for Bonnie, but then he tell Annalise she ain't going to kill him. And I was just like, what the? I'm, I'm not following the logic here, but okay. So he killed off Bonnie's daddy. The daddy was in some jail in Pittsburgh. Well, while she's telling the story to Annalise, you know, um, Laurel's outside the door, and she overhears it. So when Bonnie comes out, she's like, what? You look like you saw a ghost. Laurel's like, oh my God, fine ass Frank is in Pittsburgh. My dad told me that. I lied. I didn't, you know, act like I didn't know where he was. Bonnie was like, do not tell Annalise that. But at least now they know why the daddy did. Now we skip back out to four weeks later, back at the fire. We see the victim gets rushed into the hospital. and We see Megan, um, you know, she's working in the hospital. So now we know that Megan was not one of the ones in the house. They're about to work on the victim. And we see that actually the victim is is Laurel. They say that Laurel was pregnant. And that's when Megan sees her and was like, oh my god, I know her. So now we've got uh, Bonnie's not dead, Laurel's not dead, Megan's not dead, Oliver's not dead. Okay? Who is the pappy to Laura's baby? Alright, you guys, I'm at the bank. Let me run in here and take care of some banking and then uh, take it on back to work. You guys, make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm It's Rocks. The channel is for It's Rocks. Everything else I do will be in the bottom bar.
All right. All right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. And I plan on doing the same. Till next time, rock stars. Bye.